everyone welcome back to my channel i am jessica and this is the fields full house so today's video is going to be a collaboration with several other awesome homeschooling moms and today we are sharing with you on how we manage to teach multiple ages so be sure to check out that playlist and everybody else's channel that i will have linked in the description box below okay so if you're new here we are a large family we have nine children and actually six of them are school age this year and this is probably the number one question that I get asked when people find out that we homeschool is how on earth do you manage to homeschool such a wide range of ages? So we have, if you want to count Reagan, that would be seven um, schoolers. I have something on my hand, look at that. Okay, so she would technically be preschool. She is three years old. Um, then I have Logan who's in first grade, Miley's in second grade. Jackson's in fourth, Peyton's in fifth, Addison's in sixth, and T no, that's not right. <laughs> oh, oh, classic homeschool mom. So, I don't know what grade my kids are in, so I'm going to start at the top because I can remember that better. Addison, or Taylor's in eighth, Addison's in seventh, Peyton's in sixth, Jackson's in fourth, uh, Miley's in second, Logan's is in first, and... Reagan would be preschool. Um, she wants to be included in school. I don't always start at three, but um, I don't like, it's not formal school, it's fun school. So anyways, those are my kids' ages and grades. <laughs> not ages, I didn't even tell you their ages. Anyways, those are what grades are in, for real this time. Okay, so the concept of, think of a one-room schoolhouse, is how school started. Homeschooling was the first school that there was. And, or they sent them to the one room schoolhouse. So this isn't a new concept at all. Um, it's the way that traditional school has become is not the way that school started. So whenever you put that into perspective, I think it's a whole lot easier to understand. So anyways. <laughs> Okay, so that's one thing that I'm always kind of curious whenever I see other families that are homeschooling multiple children is how, how are they managing this? You know, there's a big age gap or whatever. Um, so I think it's really awesome to be able to share our ideas so that we can piggyback off of each other, try something new if what we're doing isn't working or something that can help us in a different season in life. So I hope that something that I share blesses you or gives you an idea on how to manage the chaos that is homeschooling. <laughs> Okay, so honestly, I still get nervous. So I'm moving in my sixth student. He's in first grade. I don't like really do a super traditional kindergarten, only if they're really interested. So I am move. I really have to sit down with Logan. So I'm moving in my sixth student this year. And honestly, I'm always nervous every time that I add another student. You would think I would have it down pat by now, but I don't. I'm always nervous. How am I going to do this? How am I going to manage adding another student? I just don't. There's no time or give in my day. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So here are a few things that I have found that work. So my first tip is to sit down with your little ones and fill up their love tanks. So I like to sit down with my little ones first thing in the morning. Sometimes it's just cuddling. A lot of times we like to read a story. It's a precious time that we have together. And I find that whenever I do this first thing in the morning, they are happier and content a little longer while I get school done with the big kids. One of my favorite ways to sit down with my little ones first thing in the morning is to read a story. I really cherish these times. Now having older kids, I know exactly how fast these moments will go by. Now Reagan is only three, but she is an eager learner. So we start with preschool first thing in the morning. All my kids have loved to do crafts. Now this is something that can keep Reagan busy and that she can learn with. My older girls actually made all these letter crafts for Reagan. They helped me out whenever we were homeschool planning at the beginning of the year, so I have them all set and ready to go. After my little ones have some undivided attention, I move on to the next in line. I find that this makes our homeschool day flow better moving from the youngest up to the oldest tip is to group as many subjects together as you can. This is where the one room schoolhouse, you know, philosophy comes into play. We can sit down and we can do a lot together as a group. In our group studies, we do morning time, our read aloud, hymn study, any books that we are adding to our the unit that we are on. 
We also do history and science. There are so many ways that you can include all ages into your group studies, especially science and history. For these subjects, each of my older kids has a notebook that has the worksheets in it geared towards their age. Now my little guys, I will have coloring sheets or different types of manipulatives that will go along with the subject that we are studying. So my third tip is, is to train up your big kids to be a huge help in your homeschool. When we all work together, we are able to get so much done in a day. My big kids help me from lunch to watching the little ones and actually helping the smaller kids with their homeschool work as well. So my older kids will typically work on what they can independently. And when they're done with that, they will rotate who is playing and helping with the little ones. Jackson prayed so hard for a baby brother and to see him now playing with him, it just blesses my heart. If I need to step away to attend to either the baby or one of the little kids, this is a great time for one of my big kids to step in and help me. They can help one of the younger learners with reading or math. This also helps reinforce skills in themselves. Typically, one of my older daughters will make lunch for everybody. And on this day, we were having smoothies and popcorn. It's a favorite lunch around here. Having their help with lunch is a huge blessing to me. It allows me to continue working with whoever still needs me. Okay, so if you are a homeschool mom of only one schooler and only littles underneath, that is a very hot, hard spot to be in and I remember it oh so well. So that would be a whole nother subject and if anybody is interested in a video on that, let me know in the comments below and I would be happy to do one. Okay, so for my fourth tip would be to have a good rotation. We have a natural rotation or flow to our day. This isn't something that's scheduled and that I have written down, you know, on a time slot. It's just how it works out pretty naturally and it works really well. So all of my kids still need individual sit down time with me. That's six kids that need to sit down with me. So naturally that's a lot and it's overwhelming. So kind of how it works out is my four older kids do teaching textbooks. So I have kind of outsourced math. Now they will still sometimes need help with me, which is, you know, perfectly fine. But whoever's on math, I'm working with somebody else with their individual book and then we'll swap. And then, you know, so whoever was on math will sit down with me and then whoever was sitting down with me will go do math. And this just works out until everybody is done. So that's I do my two, my younger ones first thing and get them kind of out of the way. And then that's how it works out with my older kids. So in this crazy rotation that I refer to as our three ring circus, those kids will also be rotating who's helping with the baby. So whoever's waiting for me and can't do anything else on their own, they will help with the baby while I'm working with a kid that, you know, needs help. And then when they're done, they will pick up with the baby where, you know, this kid left off and then that kid will come and sit down with me. Does that make sense? Anyways, it's how we get it done. <laughs> so like I said, we will have one kid doing math while another one is working with me on language arts. And during this time, whoever I am not working with, they would be rotating between doing their chores and helping with the little ones. Okay, so my fifth and final tip is to utilize nap time such a precious time <laughs> and it goes by so fast. So if you still have little ones in the house that are napping, use that time to do a science experiment or a hands-on project or an art project with your kids so that the little ones aren't feeling left out and you can focus just on your big kids. This is such an important time that we can really use in a big way. Now for my homeschool moms that only have little ones, this is a great time that you could actually just get school done with your kids. Okay, so these are my tips on how I manage to homeschool, uh, you know, multiple different ages. I hope that you all enjoyed. Again, remember this is a collaboration. Be sure to check out that playlist that I will have in the description box below and go check out those other channels. These ladies are actually friends of mine and they just bless me so much each day and I know that they'll bless you. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and if you have not already subscribed to our channel, we would love to have you. Thanks and have a blessed day.